Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I want to talk about dust spots on your sensor. Now, dust spots on your sensor, you can get them in your sensor in a multitude of ways. One of the main ways that you get them in your sensor is when you change lenses from um, you know, your wide angle to your zoom lens, and you change those lenses and it takes an extra two or three seconds to do that, that change. Maybe there's some wind blowing, you can get some dust, you can get some pollen, all kinds of stuff can get inside there. So some things that you can do to mitigate that is to uh, possibly change your camera lens in your camera bag so you have kind of a dust barrier. But there's also some things that we can do in camera raw that can help us with that. Now I haven't cleaned my sensor in ages. It's been uh, probably about a year since I've cleaned my sensor. Now I have used an air rocket to shoot some air into there to hopefully get any of that residual dust out, but as far as getting it professionally cleaned, I'm a slacker on that, nor have I bought any sensor swabs to clean it myself, uh, which I should because it was striking how, how many dust spots I had on my sensor after looking at these images. Now this photograph by no means is a amazing photograph. It's just a photograph of a pretty cool anvil cloud with some light spraying around it. But what it does do is it gives me a good representation as to where some dust spots are. Now this is just a regular photograph. I'll show you what happens on an HDR photograph in a second here, but I can see one dust spot right here. It's right there. It kind of blares out at you. Once you see it, it stays there. But there are a ton of dust spots in this photograph that I can't quite see. But as I start editing the photograph, I can start to see those dust spots come out. When I uh, you know, go to make some drastic changes to this photograph, you'll see that these dust spots are coming out in all different areas of the photograph. There's that blatant one right there, but there's some over here in, in the right hand side of the photo as well. So it's kind of difficult to see as you're editing because you don't get to see a good representation as to where your dust spots actually are. But you can go into the dust removal tool here and a lot of people will just take this dust removal tool and just click on their one spot and then they, they kind of just bounce right out of here and they're, and they're gone. Well, I want to show you some things here because you've got your size over here, you've got your feather and your, opa your opacity of that dust spot adjustment that you're going to make. Those are all pretty simple adjustments, but down here you have this thing called visualize spots. Now, as you, I'm going to go ahead and just clear all my spots. So as you move this to the right, you'll start to see those spots appear. So that one spot that I showed you, see how it's starting to show up as a little circle? So if I take visualize spots off, now we can tell that's a blatant spot, right? Because we have that visualize spots open. But let's take this all the way up and see if we can find any more spots. So more spots that I didn't even see. There's one right here, there's one right here, there's one right here, there's one right here, here. All these little circular uh, spots are actually dust spots on your sensor. So this is just on a regular photograph and it's really simple in camera raw to fix it. You just kind of click and it will take a selection of an area. Now if that's not quite the selection that you want, you can grab that green circle and move it around and take something else. Now that's with the heel tool. And the heel tool, what that will do is as it makes a selection of the area, it will blend it in with the rest of the area. The clone tool will do exactly that. It'll clone the exact spot that you take with the green area. So the red one is the spot you're trying to fix and the green is what you're using to fix it with. So I'm going to go with something like that down there. All these little circles you can grab and start moving around. If by chance you start loading this up with circles, you can take the show overlay off so that you don't see those and all you do is just kind of go through here. Now, it, when, if it automatically selects a good area, just go with it. That's what I do. So I can see that now this image is relatively free of all spots. Now this isn't a spot, this is actually a piece of the photograph, but it's a cloud that's lingering on the side, so I want to get rid of it. So now if we take visualize spots off, we can see that all those areas that were spots are now free of those spots. So that's a pretty cool trick. Now this is on a regular photograph. Watch what happens when I look at the HDR version of this. I took three exposures of this. Now I can see right here there's a blatant spot and there's a blatant spot. But let's just see if we can find more spots. Now I'm in Adobe Photoshop CC, so if I press Control Shift Alt and A or Command Shift A, I will get the camera raw dialog here. So let's go into our spot removal tool and click the visualize spots. Now look at how many spots we have. We have the same amount of spots that we had before, but there's all these other spots that are popping up all over the place too, and why is that? Well, it's because with the HDR process, what it's doing is uh, the compounding of all of the exposures on top of one another is not only allowing us to see all the detail in the image, but it's also pointing out a lot more spots in our photograph. So let's just start cleaning these up, and 
we'll go one by one here. This one I think I want to take more of, of an area that's close to that ray. So you can see that ray that's shining through there. Same thing here. And you'll see that as I start to try and make these selections, I, I can't quite grab the other ones because I've got so many circles going on already. So what I can do is I can click the show overlay and take that off and just kind of click around and I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller so it's not taking such big selections. Now this area, it keeps trying to grab the same spot. So let me go to that show overlay and see what it's trying to grab here because it looks like it's trying to take from many different areas. I don't want to make that bigger, I just want to move it um, to try and fill that spot. And if we take show overlay off and then visualize the spots off, we can see all of the spots that we fixed. Now there's still some more here. There's one right here, there's one right here, and all these spots are really tricky. There's one right here stuck in between those clouds. And there are spots all over this photo now that it we looked at the HDR version of it. So just know that when you HDR something and do that tone mapping process, that you're when you bring out noise, you're also going to be accentuating any dust spots that are there. So let's go back to take a visual off and there's all of the dust spots that I was able to find on this photograph. So there were quite a bit of dust spots there that came out even more so during the tone mapping phase. So it's it's one thing that, you know, during your post processing when you pull an image from whatever it's Photomatix or whatever program you're using uh, and you bring it into Photoshop, the first thing you should do are some things in Camera Raw before you start getting into your uh, post processing. Now I haven't done any post processing to this photograph. This is a bare bones basic photo ready to be processed now because I took all of the dust out of the photograph now and from here what I would do is I'd progress into um, my noise reduction and then any adjustments that I would do beyond that. So I'm Blake Rudis again with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider and today I showed you how to remove dust spots from your sensor even though you don't even have to go into your sensor to remove them. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a trip over to my local camera store and have my camera professionally cleaned. In the meantime, uh, if you like this, go ahead and comment, um, share. If you have any tips or tricks on how to get rid of dust that maybe I didn't cover or some different ways to look at it, that would be great. Um, you can also subscribe to my channel because as I create these tutorials, you'll get them right in your email. And again, my websites are everydayhdr.com and hdrinsider.com. And if you'd like to see some of the books that I've published, you can go to amazon.com. Just search Blake Rudis and you'll find my books.